A date has been set for the by-election that could decide Keir Starmer's future. Batley and Spen will go to the polls on the 1st of July. There is a by-election there because the incumbent MP for the constituency, Tracy Brabin, um, is moving on to become the West Yorkshire mayor. So in 2019, Tracy Brabin won, um, but with only 42.7% of the vote, you can see the Conservatives were on 36 percent. So there's only a sort of three and a half thousand majority for the Labour Party. Slightly different dynamic to in Hartlepool because the Brexit Party didn't get much in this constituency. They only got 3.2 percent. But you have a, a wild card, which is the heavy woolen district independents, um, whose candidate was Paul Halloran. They got 12.2 percent. So it'll be interesting where those votes go. Um, now, the heavy woolen district independents, they do have some crossover with UKIP, some of the same personnel. Um, so it's quite possible they have a, a similar voter base. But you know, it'll be interesting to see where they go. It's not, not as obvious um, as when it comes to the Brexit party. The obvious comparison here, as I've already um, intimated, is Hartley Paul. That was um, the by-election that Labour lost catastrophically um, really earlier this month. Now, it's similar in the sense that it's you know a traditionally Labour vote in place and it did vote for Brexit. At the same time, it didn't vote for Brexit to quite the same degree that Hartley Paul did. So in Hartley Paul, there was 70% leave in Batley and Spen. And we think about 60% leave. I say we think because the boundaries of the EU referendum weren't on this constituency, but that seems to be the best estimate that it was about 60%. So Brexit, but not as Brexit. Another difference with Hartlepool is that it also has a much larger ethnic minority population that should be um, more favourable to Labour. It also includes a large Muslim community. Um, now, that is why one particular candidate seems to think he can go into the constituency and cause an upset. That's George Galloway. The political class here has taken the voters that I see around me entirely for granted. They assume that you're a vote bank, that you'll vote for them whatever they do or more often whatever they do not do. They know the things that matter to you, but they don't care. For example, during Gaza, you were crying. They were supporting Israel in the bombardment. The leader of the Labour Party, against whom I'm standing here, doesn't matter who else is on the ballot paper, I'm standing against Keir Starmer. Why? Because Keir Starmer has made it clear, let's be fair, he's been honest. He said, I am a Zionist without equivocation. The meaning of equivocation is unconditional. He unconditionally supports Israel. Well, I unconditionally support the Palestinians, and I have been doing so for 50 years. Not yesterday or last week, but for 50 years years. I unconditionally, without equivocation, support the right of the Palestinian people to be free. And I think there are thousands of people in Batley and Spen who agree with me on that. George Galloway trying to make Palestine a big issue in this election. Labour have been fairly weak on it. He's saying you know, I I, I, can, I unconditionally stand with the, the Palestinians, what presumably lots of people um, in the constituency will like to hear. Aaron, he has caused massive upsets before. He has beaten Labour um, in constituencies with large Muslim populations. This time around, I think it's unlikely he'd, he'd win. Um, but the way he's sort of pitching himself against Keir Starmer, I think he's you know, trying to help Labour lose, essentially. Do you think he could manage that? Let's look at this kind of uh, as a as a sequence of of what he's got going for him and against him. First, it's only a month long, which is a problem for him. You know, he 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 can't win in a month. No, he can't. Secondly, you've got COVID, so the extent that he can have rallies, hustings. You know, if there are hustings indoors, multiple hustings, he's going to clearly cause major problems for Labour. If we were having this like with Hartlepool, less so, right? Because people are going to hear less from him. So I think there's a lot of kind of moving parts here. I think in 2017, you know, he only got two and a half thousand votes in Manchester Gorton in a by-election. But two and a half thousand votes here, which I think would be the baseline. Sort of the, that's the bottom, I think, here. 
would be enough probably to really screw Labour. You know, three and a half thousand majority. You've got, like you say, these independents who are kind of quite far to the right. You've got the Brexit issue and so on. I, I think if you get two and a half thousand, then Labour lo lose this. And you, and like you say, Michael, you know, people say, oh, well, you've got 20,000 votes in Scotland or whatever. George Galloway's forte is foreign policy in the Middle East. He won 2005 by Bethnal Green as a respect candidate, Michael. He beat Labour and Byrne, Bethnal Green, as a, as a respect candidate. During that campaign, Michael, he he went to Bangladesh, right? He didn't just campaign in Tower Hamlets. He literally went to Bangladesh campaigning. Right? It was just unbelievable. And then in Bradford, in Bradford West, I believe, um, what year was that? 20, it wasn't 2014, was it 20? Anyway, Bradford West before 2015, when he lost to Naz Shah. By the way, when he lost to Naz Shah, he still got 8,500 votes. He's beaten Labour twice, running as a respect candidate, running as somebody who's very principled on foreign policy. And, and to be fair to him, the only thing he's ever been consistent on is, is foreign policy stuff. You know, he said, he said horrific things about, for instance, Naz Shah. Uh, he said some really, really bad things about many people he's run against. His views on the union, his kind of tilt to the right on cultural issues recently is kind of odd. He's, he's a political narcissist. But he's very good at this, Michael. And what we just saw there was George Galloway at his launch. Uh, and actually, there was a photo going around of Kim Ledbetter, who's the Labour candidate. She actually went to the same place. Uh, but the people, they were wearing the Palestine T-shirts. The difference is those people wearing the Palestine T-shirts uh, had sort of vote George Galloway when he was there. So we can already see he's getting endorsements from people that Kim, Led Kim Ledbetter's not getting. A shorter campaign also doesn't suit Labour necessarily because they're meant to have this ground campaign, although clearly under Keir Starmer, that's gone. So I think the shorter campaign, the presence of George Galloway, I think the weakness nationally of Keir Starmer, I think Labour loses by a couple of thousand. That may change, right? That may change. Kim led better as a candidate, was a Hail Mary of a candidate. They rarely work. They very rarely work. And actually, I think that, that demonstrates Labour's desperation here, uh, but they can work. So we'll see. But I, I think she has big problems and I think she'll lose. And the question is, if she does lose, what happens to Keir Starmer? Mm. I mean, it probably is worth emphasising for the record that while, you know, it, on the face of it, you know, George Galloway standing against Keir Starmer for being unprincipled on the Israel-Palestine conflict, that might seem fair enough on some level. He's also has a history of being a very unpleasant person very recently. I mean, especially very recently when he was running against Naz Shah. Part of her backstory is that she was in a forced marriage and suffered abuse within that marriage. He, he said she was basically lying about all of that, gave him quotes to newspapers saying the ex-abusive husband has denied being abusive. You know, real, real nasty campaigning. Um, so I'm... 100% not backing Galloway in this constituency. But at the same time, he is exploiting weaknesses that I think, you know, Keir Starmer has, has brought upon himself to some degree. Um, also in the constituency, someone who I think will be much less of a threat to anyone um, is Lawrence Fox. Um, it's unlikely he'll be standing, but he is pictured here with Paul Halloran. So he is the, the candidate who I... Um, explained to you earlier, came third last time around with the heavy woolen district independence. He got 6,400 votes. Um, I presume probably Lawrence Fox wants him to stand for his reclaim party. But I would have thought that Paul Halloran will say that actually I can do much better as a local independent than with your party that has, you know, no supporters. Quick fire round. Will Labour win or lose this constituency? And will Keir Starmer go? We'll see. I think I think they'll lose it. The question is how badly. If they lose it like Hartlepool, seven eight thousand votes, which I I can't foresee. If they lose that, he has to go, and he he will go. And from what I what I'm told by sources is in the last couple of weeks, really, in the last week, um, the Labour right's losing confidence with with Keir Starmer too. That includes bureaucrats. That includes people on the NEC. That includes MPs. They're not defending him anymore. Uh, and I think they don't want to be associated with somebody who goes down really badly. And it looks like they may go down really badly and badly and spend. Uh -huh.